Hello all, and I am the MGTOW Philosopher. Now in this video I would like to discuss the idea of self-sufficiency and why I think it is so important. Now I recently posted a video about uh, the universal income, the basic universal income and why I think it's such a bad idea. And I want to address here the uh, premise of self-sufficiency, why it is so important. Now, you hear a lot of people clamoring for a basic income, usually people who are too lazy to go out and work, too stupid to get a job that uh, will make them $150,000, $200,000 a year, so they're heavily disappointed that they're not rich, but they're too dumb to realize that they're too dumb to make that kind of money, so they should focus on what they're good at and try to make as much money as is possible for them. Or people who think life is unfair and they've been taught that they should get something for nothing, that they're entitled to shit. Everybody's entitled to a free basic level of income. Well, these are all absurd ideas. For one thing, they don't at all fit in with reality. Reality is survival of the fittest. And no matter what you do or say to change that, you'll never change it. People do as well or as poorly as they are able to do or as they choose to do. Some people are intelligent enough to do well, but they choose to do more poorly because they've been taught incorrectly. Some people are just too stupid to do very well and they do as best they can. And some people have received the correct knowledge and training and are sufficiently intelligent enough to be very successful, and hence they are. And then you have some people who are uber geniuses that have had all the correct education and learned the proper lessons and do very well and then you have people who have learned most of the proper lessons they're intelligent enough to do well but still have some kind of cognitive dissonance between their ability to do well and their understanding of how society and culture works for example people like mark zuckerberg who is the ceo of facebook and he's the person i made the video about it was a response video to a speech he gave at harvard where he advocated for universal income not understanding that such is impossible and that once you do something like that you remove the incentive to work so let's explore self-sufficiency because the idea of universal income removes personal responsibility from the equation. So, let's take the normal average American, for example, has a hundred IQ, wants to be a plumber or an electrician or some other service job that is required for our society to function well. So, let's say this person is taught to value hard work, to be responsible, to abhor charity, and to want to take care of themselves. He will work hard, he will study plumbing, he will go to vocational school or become an apprentice of some kind, get on the job training, and over months and years he'll become better at the job or from much training he will get the skills needed to get an entry-level job and through that gain experience and training over months and years. and continually improve, improve, improve his salary until he's making good money. And many people in vocational blue-collar jobs can make in excess of $100,000 a year or darn near it. Uh, to say that blue-collar workers cannot make good money is a mistake. So let's now take this person and roll back the clock and teach them social justice and teach them about socialism and teach them about equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity. And what equality of outcome is, is when everybody ends up in the same place in the end. And we're all equal, equal amount of money, equal amount of things, nobody gets more, nobody gets less, nobody deserves more, nobody deserves less. <sighs> and there's no incentive to do well. So let's say the same person starts out from that starting point with that kind of ideology in their mind. Well, they won't work hard, they won't probably won't gain the necessary knowledge and experience to do a job that would pay well because they don't have to. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the television show, show Star Trek. Well, in the television show Star Trek, the Earth is a paradise. It's a socialist paradise <laughs> that would make Marx proud. <laughs> and in the uh, 24th century, Earth has become essentially a society totally focused on uh, self-development, self-improvement, 
and self-fulfillment. So everybody works because they want to improve themselves and learn more and contribute in some way to society, but there's no money. Everything's provided for you by the state. You have a home provided. You have a replicator where you just push the button, boop, and it magically creates food or whatever technology you might need, and everything is taken care of for you, and you have no worries. Well, if that is your life, why would you produce anything? Why would you be incentivized? Now, let's ratchet this back to the equivalent that we can have in Western society without all that fancy technology, where someone's provided a universal basic income. That guy that could have become a plumber, that guy that could have become something and contributed something to society by producing goods and services that people need, suddenly has no incentive to produce, no incentive to work, no incentive to do anything. So he just gets his free basic salary, free basic income, and sits on his ass playing video games and does nothing to improve himself at all. And this is the universe of Star Trek, where somehow there's no money, <laughs> everything's provided for you, and you don't have to work, but for some reason, everybody works anyway. That is why it is fantasy, folks, because there is nowhere on this planet where you are going to give everyone everything they need and they're just going to magically go out and work anyway, even though there's no incentivization of any kind. And that's why it is a TV show. It's not reality. And that's why you cannot, cannot, cannot have a universal basic income. That's just one reason. There's a myriad of problems with it, of course, that we'll get to. But the main reason, one of the biggest reasons, is that nobody produces anything. Now, of course, that is exactly what the state wants, because then they can step in and take over the ways and means of production and do it very badly. <laughs> There's no incentive for them to do it well, meaning the profit motive. So then you end up with a communist country, which is what the people, the leftists in America want, the cultural Marxists that advocate for this crap, people like Mark Zuckerberg, who is a communist. And I highly suggest you watch my video about how Mark Zuckerberg is a moron, which is essentially the title of the video. And it uh, gives a very concise point by point, uh, 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 you know, argument as he argues about why his ideas are bad but I wanted to get into it in more detail in this video uh, specifically focus on the subject itself without any nonsensical ramblings from uh, the retard Mark Zuckerberg so you can't have the basic universal income because a it de-incentivizes people people are not incentivized to produce to work and okay so you're getting a basic universal income great but who's going to produce the goods and services that you would spend that money on? Hmm. I wonder. And of course, <laughs> there is the other, uh, uh, some other arguments. Yeah, who's going to produce that? Uh, you know, you have the argument of, oh, well, you know, everybody is entitled to uh, be able to make a living. But so what? They get money. And what are they going to buy? What can they buy with that money? There's nothing to buy. If you go to a communist country, you got people standing in lines to go around the block to get two eggs and a loaf of bread. And, I mean, there's nothing to, to get. There's nothing to buy. There's nothing. Nobody's producing anything. So really, really bad idea there. And what I was going to say earlier uh, was also, what about education? You know? Mr. Zuckerberg was talking about, oh, education. You know, people should be able to be free. So the argument with the universal income, which is a cultural Marxist one, is that it frees you up to explore the things you want to explore, to develop the ideas you want to develop, and to do the things you want to do. But uh, why would you do any of them if they're not profitable? <laughs> you know, what's being talked about is is basically doing what you love to make a living but why would you do it to make a living or do it at all if you have no incentive to do so i mean sure there's people things that people want to do things that people want to learn but without some kind of profit incentive in your life to get you off your ass and working and active why would you do anything if you provide any and everything to a person, aren't they just going to be like a slug? Aren't they just going to be like a, a, a slug sitting there all day getting fat, 
uh, on their beanbag chair, uh, uh, playing games. Uh, you know, I mean, part of the reason that people work, one of the good side effects of work is that people get up, they get out, they get active, they get out in the world, uh, 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 they get a certain amount of exercise, they get a certain amount of just, just going out into the world and interacting with others. If you remove that, people have no incentive to even go outside. <laughs> Why are they going to go outside even? Because it's good for them? Look at how many fat people are in America. How often do people do what is good for them? And this is another reason why the Star Trek universe is such horrific bullshit. All these people running around, working their asses off, getting these careers, getting these degrees. For what? Because it's good for them? How often do people do what's good for them, even if they've got an incentive to get off their ass and get out there and work and interact with the world? How often do these people do something that's good for themselves? Not as often as they should, because even with that incentive to get out there and be more active and be more active in the world, 66% of people are fat. That should tell you something. Now you take away the whole incentive to make money and the whole incentive to get out there in the world and go out there and be active. You can have 100% of people fat. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Very few people are going to do what's in their best interest if they don't have to. Let me say that again. Very few people are going to do what is in their own best interest unless they have to. I mean, are these leftist, communist, Marxist, pinko idiots so stupid that they think human beings are so evolved that everybody is going to do everything that's best for themselves regardless of whether or not there's no incentive to do so? My ass! Almost nobody's going to do what's best for themselves if there's no incentivization to do so. So don't tell me that people are going to go out there and get PhDs and master's degrees and bachelor's degrees and get trained to do a complicated job or become even plumbers or electricians or whatever or just be a garbage man if they don't have to. If they're going to walk around on girders and risk falling 100 stories to their desks or go out there on an oil rig and risk their lives uh, uh, you know, trying to get oil out of the, the ocean floor that's uh, a mile deep. Uh, people are not, or, or go out on one of those goddamn crabbing boats. It's the most dangerous job in the world, and, and get old before their time, uh, uh, spending twenty-hour days working, uh, uh, you know, getting no sleep for three months at a time because they feel like it. I just feel like it. Yeah, very soon you're gonna have no crab to eat because <laughs> there's no incentive for these guys to go out there and do that. And the same applies to every single thing produced in society, which is why in every socialist communist country, eventually the government has to take over the ways and means of production because the average run-of-the-mill citizen isn't doing it anymore, which is exactly what the government wants. And that way they can take over more control because now it's become necessary through the very policies that they created for them to take over and produce because nobody else is producing. So more and more and more private sector activities need to be taken over by government until eventually they control everything, just like in old-style Soviet Russia. Do you want to live there? I don't think so. So that's a huge problem with the basic income. Another problem is, well, creativity. Countries that are like this are not very innovative because there's no incentivization. Not only that, but they don't have a lot of wealthy people who want to be there because they're going to get taxed out the ass. And of course, if you're living in a society where the government has taken over completely in regards to the ways and means of production, well, you're not going to have even private businesses anymore. Everything will be owned by the government. But before you reach that point, you're going to have the rich and the wealthy who are going to be getting taxed almost 100%. Because so many people have just sat down on their asses because they can. Because they have no need to work anymore because they're given all this free money. Of course, I don't know where they're going to buy the food to keep themselves alive to uh, 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 <laughs> enjoy this free money. I don't know where they're going to get the electricity or the water to enjoy this free money because you know, then nobody will need to be working at the uh, power plants. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where the government is going to mandate workers. And before you know it, everybody is going to be given a mandated job. People are going to, oh, you have to do this because there'll be shortages. There'll be so few people working that eventually you would reach a point where the government would have to, 
have to mandate work and compel people by force, meaning coercion, government coercion, to work. That's another problem with your universal basic income bullshit. Karl Marx loved it because he had this wonderful idea of making one half of the population, meaning the most productive people, into slaves, and the other half of the population, the truly smart, intelligent people who were really creative, into laissez-faire, uh, couch potatoes who could just do whatever they want and enjoy leisure. Uh, his plan doesn't work, though, because it requires making slaves of half the population to feed, clothe, and house the other half of the population who are all parasites. So that's another reason why the universal income model does not work, because it takes away freedom. And this argument that the universal uh, uh, income, basic universal income, would somehow free people, they would become free to explore whatever they want. It's total and utter bullshit. It's just one more step along the road to totalitarianism, to a communist government, where the government itself controls all ways and means of production and there's no more private property. That's all the universal income is. It's just another tool to be implemented to further convert the government into a communist one. Okay? You cannot have a basic universal income because somebody has to pay for that. And if the government thinks, oh, well, we don't have to produce anything, we can just print money and hand it out. What are you going to buy with the money? You're not going to buy anything. And by the way, you're not going to be able to buy anything from other countries either because you don't produce anything. So you give that money to other countries in the form of trade. You buy wheat from them. Then they have your money, but your country produces nothing. So your currency is worthless because they can't use it to buy from you goods and services in the form of trade. So if you've got a country that's producing nothing and is just printing money, Essentially, your currency has become worthless because you have no real wealth. Because money isn't money, it's just currency. It's a way to transfer wealth. And if you're a country that doesn't produce anything because the majority of your population is sitting there getting a free universal income, essentially you have worthless money because it's represented by nothing. No wealth at all. So you're not going to even be able to buy shit from other countries because your money's worthless and you've got nothing to trade to exchange for goods and services from other countries. You want to talk about uh, 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 making a country into an a, a, a isolated one? These leftists just talk about all this diversity and, and, and cultural diversity bullshit being so wonderful. You want to talk about being an island unto yourself? Enact these policies you'll very quickly stop yourself from being competitive at all in the global marketplace. And nobody's going to want to be coming to your country anymore for anything. The illegals will get out too. There'd be nothing there for those parasites to sub consume. The, the, the attractiveness that made you a, a, a destination for both illegal and, illegal, illegal and legal uh, migrants alike will disappear. The fact that you're wealthy. You won't have wealth anymore. You'll just have worthless paper. So that's another reason why the universal uh, income doesn't work. And of course, eventually, yeah, they, you wouldn't have 99% uh, uh, of the population sitting around on their ass. It's not possible. You might have a short period of that, and then when the money runs out, the government would literally, literally have to enact coercive programs to make people work. Now, before, when you were getting that easy welfare money, but not that universal in income, and now you want to be even more of a parasite and get a universal income, well, too bad. You've now been conscripted into one of the many labor programs that the government has enacted to raise productivity and create the necessary goods and services for society to survive. So now you've become a slave, <laughs> getting paid Whatever your universal basic income is, except now it's been slashed because they couldn't afford to pay you as much because all the rich people who were paying the taxes that were giving you your little universal income left long before the government decided to start grabbing everyone's shit and make everything into community property. <laughs> so you've driven out the people who can really produce and all production has been handed over to the government who has now conscripted your ass, and now you have become government property to work for them, doing what they want you to do. So congratulations. 
Not only has your new universal income been slashed, you're not getting nearly as much as you were promised in the beginning, but you've now become a slave to the state. You want to talk about being a wage slave because you're having to voluntarily enter into an agreement with an employer to make a certain amount of money which you feel may or may not be enough? Well, now you have no choice and you are involuntarily being conscripted to work the job that they choose for you to choose, that they choose for you. And now, of course, they're going to pay you whatever the hell they want to pay you, which no doubt you will feel is not enough especially considering there's bread lines around the block and it's impossible to get an egg. Well, there are a lot of problems with the universal income. You're goddamn right, there's a shitload of problems with it. It eventually leads to a communist state. It is 100% impossible, cannot work. It is just a means to an end. It's a promise meant to change the society and make it full communist. As the people who believe in it have gone full retard. Self-sufficiency is the key, people, to freedom and success. Parasites are parasites because they are incentivized to be parasites. They are incentivized to be parasites because the goods and services are there that allow them not to work. Let me repeat that. The, the goods and services are there that allow them not to work. And the easier and easier you make these goods and services to acquire, the more and more people will just do nothing. And already we have too many people, tons and tons, tens and tens of millions of people on food stamps and on various other forms of aid. Imagine what would happen if you gave people something like $2,500 a month free and clear. Can you imagine... What would happen? The whole country would stop working. I mean, you'd have a small percentage of people, entrepreneurs and such, who would continue to work, but the vast majority of people would just sit down on their ass and say, finally, leisure, where I can explore what I want to do and do what I want to do with my free time. But it wouldn't last long. <laughs> it's just a carrot, okay? It's just a carrot on a stick, people. It wouldn't last very long. The money would run out very quickly. And then you would end up with a totalitarian state because the government would have to take over all forms of production. It's a bad idea, but self-sufficiency, now that's the key. Get up off your lazy ass, get a job. The majority of people on welfare and food stamps and all these other forms of aid are perfectly able to work. But you see, the government wants you on assistance. It wants you on welfare so that you become a ward and a possession of the state. And then once they have total power, then they can make your ass do whatever they want you to do. I mean, you might think, oh, well, the government doesn't want everybody just being a, a parasite. Then nothing would get produced. Wrong. Wrong, you fucking morons. It's all a scheme. It's all a scam. There is an end goal. It's a means to an end so that everybody becomes owned by the state and indoctrinated into an ideology of being a slave, okay? To an ideology of being taken care of, of being a slave, of doing what the state wants you to do. And then once everybody's a parasite, then when there's nothing being produced, they have a perfectly valid excuse to take over all forms of production and to become full totalitarian. And of course, you who have now become a sheep, well, you agree with them because, hey, you've been taught to agree with them. And even if you don't, really have no choice because they have all the power and control. They're controlling the purse strings on you. What are you going to do? <laughs> you let this happen. Don't believe this bullshit about a, a basic universal income. It's impossible. Even if you taxed all the supposed 1% of people to 100% of their income, you wouldn't even come close to paying for universal education, meaning universal college, let alone a basic income for everyone. And of course, the other problem is scarcity. Because even if goods and services were produced, the cost would be very high. Okay? Now, of course, you might say, oh, well, the government would enforce price controls, and they're the ones producing the goods and services. So, you know, they would make sure that the cost wasn't great. Yeah. But how many times have you seen the government do a good job at anything? Government is highly inefficient. 
When they do something, they are essentially a monopoly, meaning there's no competition, meaning that even if they didn't force price controls on themselves, themselves to make everything fair and, and equal and made sure that all the products that they were providing were affordable so as to keep the sheep happy, they wouldn't produce nearly enough of them. The government is highly inefficient. It's one thing, it's one industry, that's one business, that's it. Uh, where in our society we, do we have just one business providing the goods and services we need? Nowhere. Uh, because without the competition and the incentive motive, you do not have the incentive to be productive. And the government is never productive enough, even with the things they do. Look at, look at education. Tons and tons of money wasted. We spend more on education in America than any other country, and we have some of the lowest test scores and some of the dumbest students on earth. So don't tell me that the government, no matter what price controls they enacted, could make goods and services affordable enough because there wouldn't be enough, and eventually would have to be buying stuff on the black market, and the prices would be insane compared to what the government was providing. Because again, you have no alternatives, no competition, so pfft, no choice. And you end up spending what little universal income, whatever income you are now getting on that now rare shit. What before was very commonplace, we had more than we needed, now we have less. And because you're using money that is represented by nothing, the goods and services will probably be even more expensive because likely they're being imported from other countries. And so your money only has value in America, where any and everything is extremely expensive. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get it. So this is, not only is it extremely problematic, but it is impossible. And the people who advocate for this clearly have done no thinking on it, or they are willing participants in a lie, and they are going along with this narrative and pushing this ideology because it serves them, because somebody's putting money into their pocket, giving them influence, making promises to them, so long as they push this narrative and use their fame, their popularity, uh, uh, their position of power in the media, uh, people like people like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, to push this agenda because it benefits them, or because he's actually that stupid that he really believes it's a good idea, which is entirely possible, because we all know that cognitive dissonance is a powerful thing, and that people can hold contrary beliefs, and that they can hold beliefs that are wholly and utterly illogical, but they're able to distance themselves the aspects of their brain that use logic and reason, they're able to distance their beliefs and in fact cut their beliefs off from being able to be analyzed with any logical or reasonable sense. Because, you know, if they weren't able to do that, we wouldn't have any intelligent people who believe this bullshit. But we've got far too many pushing this type of nonsense. And they clearly haven't thought it through because they've been indoctrinated. And indoctrinated beliefs are very, very difficult to unlearn. People who have indoctrinated beliefs, it's very difficult to reteach them or to get them to see the flaws in their ways. Like religion, for example. I mean, if you try to tell a religious person there's no God or that there's no proof for God and that what they're believing in is essentially nonsense, a fairy man in the sky that controls the universe and has puppet strings on everybody, uh, you know, they're going to have all sorts of arguments and ways like faith, for example, uh, to totally disavow uh, uh, not even have to look at their beliefs. Uh, you know, there's tons and tons of safeguards built in to Marxism, leftism. Uh, these types of ideologies have safeguards built in to the indoctrination that make the person highly resistant to re-education and seeing the nonsense that exists within their own arguments. So there's an inherent cognitive dissonance built into the leftist ideology. And so that's why many intelligent people can have these beliefs. So universal income is a universal fail. Anybody that advocates it is, in my book, a moron, at least in that regard. And I don't care what they're good at in any other area. You are a moron. Universal income it doesn't work at all. It never could work. And the only thing it could lead to is a totalitarian communist state. Take care of yourself. Be self-sufficient. And don't re try to rely on other people for free shit. And if everybody did that, nobody would need anything. Of course, we know that's not going to happen anytime soon. I am the MGTOW Philosopher, and I wish you a good day. Take care.